You know, I had reported previously that obviously by now most people understand that it was the United States that destroyed the pipeline going from Russia into Germany. The reason being is because for the most part, Europe has been occupied by American forces uh, via all these military bases under the guise of we're protecting them from their enemies. The real enemy is the United States to Europe. And so Europe, with help from the UK, uh, excuse me, Israel, with help from the UK, was placed in 1948, uh, and they were placed in Jerusalem. They were given back that, that city because it supposedly belonged to them because of what is stated in the Bible. And what we're watching today is not, is, is not new. Israel refused to send weapons to Ukraine. Um, and of course, the reason being is because, and this is according to the Israeli Times, one major reason for Israel's hesitant, hesitance appears to be its strategic need to maintain freedom of operations in Syria, where Russia largely controls the airspace. And so back in 2015, back in 2015 and in 16, Israel was having issues with Iran. And it was kind of odd because America was sending money to Iran. As you can see here, the U.S. sent $400 million. And this actually just recently happened where, again, Iran was given or was told that they were going to be given something like $6 billion. And, of course, the word on the street was, well, hey, if you give them this money, in essence, it's going to fund terrorism against, against Israel. And so this actually happened back in between the 2015 and 16 conflict, where it says the Obama administration recently arranged a plane with 400 million in cash. Uh, on the same day, Iran released four American prisoners and formally implemented a nuclear deal, U.S. officials confirmed. President Obama approved $400 million transfer, which had been announced back in January as part of an, as part of an Iran nuclear deal. This was part of a $1.7 billion, uh, $1 billion settlement resulting claims at an international uh, tribunal at The Hague over a failed arms deal under the time of the Shah. And of course, people were not happy because details of the cash delivery drew fresh condemnation of the Iran deal from Republicans. They charged that the administration had empowered a major sponsor of terrorism because of the nuclear arrangement enabled Tehran to re-enter the international economy and it gives access to long frozen funds. And of course, during this time period, approximately 170 Palestinians were killed and 15,000 were injured uh, by the Israelis in 2015. Now, this has been going on back and forth. Again, Israel is completely dependent upon the United States and of course the UK because they were the ones that put them there. The people that are there Right? The Ashkenazi Jews that are there now were placed there in 1948, and these people came out of Europe. This is hence why they're called Ashkenazi. It refers to their background being European. And I believe, I forget, there was a, there was a, uh, a study, like a genealogical study that was done way back, and it showed that two-fifths of all Jews that live now originated from like, a few women that are originally from Europe. And so these people were, in essence, supplanted from Europe and placed in this portion of the Middle East. And they basically became a vassal state to the West. You're going to keep an eye on these people. Now, when these people who are in charge of keeping an eye on this region kind of don't do what they're supposed to, well, then what you end up with is American-sponsored terrorism through places like Iran, which then funnels through Hamas and Gaza, etc. And this was the same thing that happened with the Taliban and Russia, and of course, what we're seeing now. And this is why America had pushed back against Germany, right? Russia didn't get harmed by the sanctions. If anything, it, it allowed them to flourish. And India, despite being part of BRICS, was allowed by the United States to take Russian oil, refine it, and then sell it to Europe, and of course, at a premium. So Russia sold their oil. India made their money 
by refining it and then selling it to Europe at a higher price. And Europe got stuck buying LNG at five times the rate from the United States and having to buy more expensive oil from India that was just basically Russian oil. And this is kind of what this is. This is basically what's going on. What you're watching is certain countries under NATO. This is why, even though as long as Swiss had been, you know, an independent country, they had been neutral and they were having issues was because there were certain wealthy Americans that were using the Swiss bank to avoid paying the United States government taxes. And so back in 2013, 15, etc., around that time period, America started putting pressure on Swiss. And so something similar was happening recently. And then America said, no more neutrality. And this is why Swiss became part of the United States. They were like, the freedom that we gave you, we're not giving you any longer. We're, we're pulling everybody in. And this is what was happening with the World Economic Forum, which was being held in Switzerland, in Davos. And of course, who was the chief proponent for the World Economic Forum and what is referred to as the Fourth Industrial Revolution, whereas the Great Reset, this was none other than Klaus Schwab, who was a German. And if you understand what happened in late 1800s, Europe, uh, and these, these are all socialists. All these people are socialists. It's just a matter of who's going to be in charge. And so Europe and the United States back in like the 1860s, 1870s, before they had the original depression of the 1870s, Germany was leading the charge in the future. Now, these people are socialists. But by this time, so was the United States because they had been using printed money and spreading socialism. I did this video talking about it. And this is how the black community ended up not going into the banking system because the people were just having their labor robbed from them, literally. And so America funds World War I. America funded World War I because France lost to Germany in the 1800s, in, the, in like the mid-1850s where they lost a war. Germany made France pay reparations. Within less than 50 years, where after the depression of the, 18, of the late 1800s subsided, what you end up is Germany and the United States going head to head in terms of, uh, in terms of spearheading who was going to lead the way in the future. This was through the rail industry, and so America funds the war, World War One, and they fund the UK, and they fund France to go to war with Germany. This is evident by the fact that during World War One. At the end of World War One, Germany is forced to pay restitution now to France. Previously, France was paying restitution to Germany. And then America gives Germany the money as a loan to pay back France and the UK. And France and the UK took that money and gave it back to the United States to pay back the loan. And then Germany got the funny mustache man who was pushing against the slavery in essence that the United States put upon the people in Germany and the funny mustache man went to war. And then of course you end up with world war two. And during world war two, Germany when essence was essence made a slave for almost a hundred years. They just recently, I believe it was in 2010 just made their last uh, reparations payment to the United States. So during this whole period of time, Germany is, in essence, is a slave state to the United States. This is why Donald Trump, when he was in office, was referring to these people as globalists because they were proposing a new world order, right? They were pushing for a new world order. They, they, Klaus Schwab wanted a different nation to lead because the United States was bullying people with the U.S. dollar. And so what they were, they were pushing for, uh, changing currencies and under his ideology the United States would no longer be a world power and so this is why you see the United States in essence is pushing back against all these countries it's why they've uh, plunged Europe into poverty economically speaking right the, the 
outcome. You have to look at the outcome. Don't look at what, what is spoken. Look at what the outcome of what had happened. The breaking of the supply chain. Raising interest rates very quickly, which had a huge effect on the German economy. Uh, on the, Not only in Germany, but also in much of Europe. And of course, every country that is attached to Europe. And most of these countries are now experiencing uh, poverty because of the energy crisis. And America stopped producing oil. And of course, Germany was, and of course, they cut off the supply from Russia directly. They cut off the direct Russian supply, which gave Europe cheap energy, which allowed Europe to feel a little more free from the United States. And this is why Donald Trump, during his speech in 2017, was making this statement about how Germany was going to be, uh, in essence, tied to Putin, like indefinitely. Now, Germany is Russia's biggest export market in Europe for gas. Uh, back in 2018, Donald Trump publicly criticized Germany for Nord Stream, the pipeline deal with Moscow. He even called Berlin a captive to Russia. In a speech at the UN General Assembly, no less, Mr. Trump said Germany would become totally dependent on Russian energy. And what did the German delegation do? Well, have a look. Reliance on a single foreign supplier can leave a nation vulnerable to extortion and intimidation. That is why we congratulate European states such as Poland for leading the construction of a Baltic pipeline so that nations are not dependent on Russia to meet their energy needs. Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we are committed to maintaining our independence from the encroachment of expansionist foreign powers. Like they would become slaves of, of, of Russia, but they had free trade with Russia. But what really America didn't like was the fact that Europe, through via Germany, was getting too comfortable with Russia and America and Russia have always been at odds. And so this is the same thing that's going on with Israel. Israel cozying up a little too much with Russia. We wanted you to send weapons and you didn't. Just like Europe didn't want to initially <clears throat> until America put the squeeze on them. And then Israel didn't. And subsequently after that, America sent money supposedly six billion dollars that they were going to send to iran and then you got a terrorist attack in in israel and then of course israel then reluctantly about this time agreed to send weapons and that's basically what's going on